We are going to have two panels. I'm going to do a little bit of a program change uh, to make sure that, you know, we accommodate the stream because, you know, if you're on the stream, you don't really have mental power hours, so you don't have a mental, I'm so sorry, next time you need to come into the room. Hi, stream. So we're going to have the conversation with Ulungile and Ayanda Tabete next, my favorite sisters. And when we're done with Ulungile and Ayanda Tabete, I have a surprise career panel for you with three ladies who I really admire, who have built uh, amazing careers within the corporate space. I worked for two seconds, and I've been an entrepreneur my entire life, so I feel like I often neglect my corporate girls. I'm being much more intentional about my corporate ladies and making sure, you know, not everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. You see, they're already like, yeah, you never post anything about careers. We're gonna be much more intentional about careers. I know nothing about it. So I will also be learning because like I said, I worked for one second at multi-choice and another second at discovery and I was out. So I've been an entrepreneur for, since I was 25. I'm 38 today, so you can imagine. My mind is always entrepreneurship, 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 but I'm really proud. I've been able to sustain my life for that long. It is wild in these streets. I can tell you that much. So, Without further ado, I don't know if they're ready. They're so cute, guys. I love them so much. I tell them all the time. I don't think they believe me. I love them so much. One of the reasons I invited the sisters here is because, you know, I felt very strongly that we need to tell stories of success, particularly for black women in the entertainment industry. So many of our sisters are doing very, very well, and often the stigma of celebrity follows them everywhere. I want to use the space to really um, amplify the work that they do, their ability to monetize their careers. I was speaking to Ayanda and saying, you know, um, I don't know if people know that, you know, she's a marketer as well. She started at SAB doing the work. And um, it's, it's obvious when you look at how they've built Quickface that, uh, you know, there's some thinking behind those pretty faces. And of course, Lungi, I always admired, she doesn't know this, but you know, when I look at their relationship, I often think of my nieces and um, just how I've seen her navigate, you know, coming to Joburg, staying with her sister, doing the makeup thing, moving out, getting her own home. It's really, really admirable. And that's the reason I really love the sisters. So I am going to now welcome Ayanda and Lungi Letabete on stage for our conversation. What is their song? Hey, they know my story. For more dogs to I be hustling to the So cute. Ladies, thank you for spending time with us this afternoon. I'm so excited. Like, I'm actually blown us. away because we spoke about this so many years ago and yeah. it wasn't half of what this is. When I came here, I was, I was really blown away. Don't so make me cry. Congratulations to thank you, you for this. Yeah. But don't make me cry. I'm not doing that today. <laughs> But thank you so much. Thank you, Lungile. It's my first time actually meeting your sister. Yeah. One of those, like, really? I've been greeting you. Yes. Yeah, I've been greeting time. people, and I'm like, do we know each other or have we spoken 10 million times yeah. on Instagram? Yeah, <laughs> because go. it feels like that, doesn't yeah, it? it does. You know, yeah. really, really awesome platform if you are using it in the right way. You know, you're bringing the positive energy. A lot of people are here because, you know, they follow people on Instagram, and that's the reason they, they bought into this platform and the work that we do. So, how are you guys today? We're good. We're good. I'm blown away. I'm actually <laughs> so nervous to see you ladies because there's, you guys are powerful. You look absolutely amazing. Everyone is dressed to the nines. And um, I just hope we deliver something of value to each and every one yeah. here today. I'm positive that you will. So, like I said, uh, um, I don't remember where we met, and I never remember where I met people, but I've known uh, you for quite some time. And I'm those people like who's on your DMs all the time, like, oh, I love this so much. Oh, my gosh, I love this so much, and this and that. And um, I've really just watched you grow into the businesswoman that you are today. And of course, um, taking your sister along and making sure that you guys finally fulfill this dream that you both had of getting into the makeup business. So I want to talk a little about the story, and Lungile, you narrated so well, of how Quickface came about. And also, I want everyone to know Quickface is not just a product, it is an organization. It is. Yeah. 
exciting. <laughs> um, so how the story came about, I, well, we've always wanted to create a brand together. And um, it was mostly my sister that like continued to nudge it um, of what can we create that every woman can um, use, that every woman can identify with, and what's the real story behind our own personal journey with makeup. Over the years, we've wanted simpler looks, and because of that, we wanted to create a bag that um, every single woman can use, regardless of um, the space that they're in in their life or what their day-to-day -day looks like. And yeah, that's how I came into the picture. And then, because then I had the expertise of what would go into that bag that every woman can use. Love it. Yeah. 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 Ayanda, why did you have this idea? Of course, you're a marketer. We're always thinking, our minds are yeah. always buzzing. But why this specific idea? And how long have you had this idea? Look, you know, I hate packing. I hate having a lot of stuff. Yeah. So if you're going over to your boyfriend's place, I just want to have like a little bag a little to go on, in. Do you know kids. what I mean? If you're going over onto a holiday, I don't want to pack like two suitcases of makeup and, and so much more. And we felt over the years that people always spoke about how simplistic our makeup look was. And I just felt like there isn't, a lot of people assume that we all are good at doing makeup. And actually, a lot of people aren't. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people aren't good at doing makeup, and a lot of people don't like the over-exaggerated makeup looks, and um, a lot of people just don't have time. You, yep. you have so much to do. The last thing you want to do is sit in the mirror for two hours doing your makeup, you know? So I thought, you know, let's capitalize on this. Let's capitalize on the very busy woman. Let's capitalize on the woman that is on the go. She, she wants to, to travel light. And I thought, uh, we need a makeup range. This is what I actually had a conversation with my sister. And I said, we need a makeup range that is easy, that is accessible, quick. and that is affordable. That yeah. is just quick. Like, you get it, you, and, and it, it tells you the steps. So, I said, what, I said, we had this conversation on my couch. I actually wrote it down on my diary, and I said, I have this idea. I want to create a makeup look for the everyday woman that is what I've just described. And I said, what are the seven products that, no, I said, actually, what are the, what products? Are the products that we will need to just do a, a glam look, like a simple, beautiful glam look? And then, then we started um, experimenting to say, okay, cool, if I had to just minimize the products that I had to use and I just needed these products yeah. to, to have to achieve a beautiful glam look, it would come to seven of these products. Yeah. We tested it out, the look came out absolutely beautiful. And then we're like, okay, this is good. This works. So now this is the story <laughs> of faith. Faith is so important in your journey as an entrepreneur. And um, and so we came up with this idea. I had like a rough presentation, I'm not that great. I know that I come from corporate, but I was never that great at presentations. <laughs> I'm better at talking. But, um, and so we came up with this. I had a rough stretch of a presentation. And then this one says, you know, I actually, she was head of Scarlet Hill makeup at the, pri at, 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 at the time. And she was at, at Mr. Price. Obviously, she said, you know, I'm quitting Mr. Price. I'm we are done. starting our makeup brand. We like, had no quit. plan. We have nothing. We, we didn't know why, no who was going to manufacture our products. We, we didn't know no anything. Distributor. And we, we um, registered our company, which is Quick Face Beauty. Yeah. We trademarked our name. We trademarked everything. And then she told Mr. Price, she went to Mr. Price and she said, listen, it's been I'm great. Quitting. I'm out. <laughs> I'm done. And then they said, where are you going? And yeah. they said, she said, um, no, my sister and I are starting a makeup line. And they said, okay, if you're starting a makeup line, we'd really like to get on how board. Can we be how can we be involved? Yeah. And that's how the story that's came. How it came together. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was a whole lot of faith. You know, we, were, we, we went on a flight yeah, in to Mr. Meeting. Price. We were praying. We are just like, Lord Jesus. We were so nervous. It was just the two of us. <laughs> it was just the two of us with our laptop and our sketchy presentation. <laughs> but I knew the idea was one that um, was really going to sell yeah. and one that was really needed so yeah i love nothing like a person that will talk and talk and talk <laughs> yeah i already told you the whole story i really love how you guys tell your story how you're so passionate about uh, the work that you're doing i want to track back a little bit because you know this seems to be something that is accessible also because of you know a lot of uh, what you brought to the table Lungile, yes. and, and and a lot of it was really starting to firstly with understanding makeup what was the reason you went into makeup? Oh my God, it dates so far back. I had very, very bad problems with skincare. Yeah. I had 
extremely bad acne, and I was studying abroad. Um, I went to an exchange program in Belgium for a year, and while I was that side, I really got like into YouTube, and when I dived in, first I got into YouTube because I just wanted to hear people that spoke Zulu in a foreign <laughs> country. Um, then uh, when I got that side, I really started get immersing myself into YouTube and the creators that I was following spoke a lot about beauty. So I would go to the shops in um, like my lo local areas or maybe in the next town looking for the products that they were describing. And you were art. And I was studying, oh, okay, and I was studying art. I love it, like they're like, at some point they were literally looking at each other, <laughs> telling the story to each other again. Yeah. Um, so I was looking for these products that they were describing. I couldn't find anything that was my skin tone. They would either be, either be too dark, too light. And so I would use my expertise in art to mix things together or colors together so that I get what works for me. Oh, wow. But then I realized a lot of my friends um, my black friends as well were experiencing the same problems, and that's how I really got interested in makeup, specifically exclusivity, uh, inclusivity in makeup. Love that. Mm. I think uh, it makes sense now, the whole um, story with uh, decor and your arts, because yeah. you have yeah. an amazing, amazing eye. Everything yeah. you, you do, everything you post is absolutely brilliant, and I think anyone who follows you would agree with that. But I want to go back to you, Ayanda. You know, um, you were working, you went into the industry, and you wanted to pursue a career, particularly on TV. When did you start thinking about entrepreneurship. And the reason I ask is because, you know, we haven't seen that culture really pick up in South Africa, and I think it's something that we slightly touched on, even the idea of ownership and taking that risk, because how you guys have structured your deal means a lot of risk sits with you. Yeah. I can't imagine how you think through uh, manufacturing and who sits with what rights, and if we're coming up with um, a, a specific color, you know, that is, you know, Lungile spoke through it, how, how do you navigate that? But that's not even the question. Firstly, the transition from thinking of yourself as a public figure into going into entrepreneurship. Did you even know what no, you were doing? No, no, no. I, I never thought about entrepreneurship, honestly. I, I didn't think I would be like the greatest entrepreneur. All I thought about was I just need to make multiple streams of income. That's all. I never felt like my mom, I grew up in a home where my mom was a nurse. She would sell uh, she beverages would sew at home. She would sew. So I always felt like a woman doesn't need to be one thing. You mm. always need to be multifaceted. You can do so many things and still maintain excellence. That's the trick, right? Yep. Is that even though you're doing a lot of things, you have to maintain your excellence. So for me, it started off, I was in varsity. I used to be a waitress um, at Nescafe. And I moved from that, then I did promotions. And then, so I've always had two jobs. So even when I went into corporate, I was in corporate for seven years as a brand manager. And even when I went to corporate, I used to still do my adverts on the side. I used to always have multiple streams of income. I left corporate because my side hustles and my, uh, my, my other streams of income became way more than what I was earning at corporate. And I felt like, when I felt like I had reached the point where if I ever needed to go back to corporate, I could just go back because I was a senior in what I was doing. I'm very well versed with the marketing field and, and, and all of that. So I just felt like I had done what I needed to do there and I needed to explore other opportunities and this door was knocking. So a lot of a women here are, are corporate ladies and some people ask me, when is the right time to leave? The mm. right time, firstly, you'll feel it in your spirit because yeah. your spirit is your guide. But the second thing is that the right time to leave corporate, if you want to leave corporate, because not everyone is for this True. Field, hey? it's hard. Mm. But if you want to leave corporate, the right time is when you have established yourself enough in a particular field to be able to jump off because there aren't a lot of opportunities right now and there's very little way, well, it's, it's becoming much harder and harder to make an income mm -hmm. uh, generating from other av avenues. So I just thought of multiple streams of income and it led me into entrepreneurship. Mm. I think that's such an important point. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think that's such an important point that you mentioned there because there is this romanticized idea of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And uh, I always, I'm those people who, you know, when someone says, I want to leave my job and I want to start a business, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Just hold think up a little it. bit mm. because it's a nice idea, but it requires a lot of planning. And I love that in your story, that's exactly what you do. You need to figure out what your runway is. You have bills to pay. It's not an emotional decision. You need to figure out if I'm leaving, if I have a retirement coming out, how long is that going to last for? What kind of break even and I'm projecting for, for my business, et cetera, et cetera. So just touching on that, I think it's important to mention in the room that those ladies who are considering exploring entrepreneurship, it's important to kind of figure out juggling your job and something else. And yeah. maybe it's just a hobby. Maybe it's not a business. Yeah. And to have a decent size saving. I'm, I'm, I know that I'm very calculated risk taker. There are people who are not like me who just like go for it, you know. But I just feel like if you have enough sort of a, a cushion for savings, it helps you to not make the wrong decisions. There's so many brands at that point that wanted me to do stuff for, let's say, skincare. But I felt like, no, there'll come a point where you're going to offer me this certain amount of money, and right now is the time for me to say no. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that if you're not in a position to do so and you're scrambling for cash. Mm -hmm. So you have to set yourself up well in different ways. It doesn't have to be cash in the bank. It can be the fact that I knew that if I went to 10 auditions, I'll win at least two of those auditions. And I knew, okay, a young 30,000 a month, I'll be fine, <laughs> you know? So those are also the kind of plans that you just have to put in place to ensure that you are, yeah, you're able to, to jump onto that. I think that note is such a great segue to my question to Ulungile. You know, the ability to go and say, I'm no longer continuing with this relationship. And then to still have an opportunity with that brand to take you on. I think a lot of people think if you go that direction, then the brand will hate you and they'll never want to work with you because how dare you say no to a big brand. What do you think you did right in that relationship that allowed you to pivot from supplier to partner? Um, I think that... I yeah. think that it's, I've always given myself, I, every opportunity that I get, I always go above and beyond, and I yeah. always give the best of myself, regardless of how small it may be to the next person. Mm. But it's something, I, I look at my life as a culmination of like connecting the dots, mm. and one thing is going to lead to the next, or that it's because one opportunity is leading you to something else that ho God has destined for you. Mm. So that for me is the reason why I always gave my best in that relationship. And um, so it was easy for me to have a, then a, a, a frank conversation with Mr. Price and be like, I'm ready to move on to the next stage of my life. And as a brand that has supported me, they'll understand that this is part of my growth. Mm. But then it was just great in, in this instance in that they wanted to then be part of that next stage of my journey. Mm. Yeah. One thing about Lungi, and I will say this, is that she is excellent. Anything that she is a part of, she'll do it excellently. Even now, I know that the reason we are part of Mr. Price and the reason that Mr. Price took us on is because of their absolute love for her. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I think I think we all see it, and 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 really, if no one tells you, we definitely appreciate. It. I just go to your page sometimes, feel good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like oh, this couch. Where did she get it? And this table, and this, and how you place everything. So and she fully really immerses herself. Absolutely, the, the way she actually started with makeup was that was the YouTube stuff and. I, well, I just saw her always on YouTube, and this one date, my makeup artist disappointed me, and then I said, just do my makeup. She's like, no, no, I was scared. And then, she, like, and I then I said, this. but you're always on YouTube. What are you doing? <laughs> and that's actually how she started doing yeah. my makeup. You both seem like you have such a great head on your shoulders. You know, the way that you, you think through your relationship, I think the two of you, which we're gonna get to because I know there's fights. I want the juice. <laughs> on what the fights are about. You see you have like you have a great head on your shoulders and how you just carry yourselves, how you operate in the spaces that you're in, how you do business. How what do you think when you think of how you were raised, your relationship with your parents? is the thing that makes you guys who you are. Because I'm still gonna get into the money thing because that's another thing I've noticed about both of you, that there seems to be a lot of planning around your finances. I remember when you posted that you're buying a house, I was like, didn't she start yesterday <laughs> doing content? What is going on here? But I think from just the conversations that I've had with you and what I've seen, 
there is a lot of education around really thinking through how you build the life that you want. So, first question, what do you think in your childhood contributes to how you guys are and how you relate with each other and your family and all of that? Poverty. <laughs> <laughs> We just want to go back. <laughs> Honestly, this is true. that's this is what very it is. True. <laughs> Honestly, we're just like we come from an average we're family. We work hard. We, we do whatever we have we to have do. We have one single mother. <laughs> like I'm sure a lot of us share the same story here. We didn't have a, si uh, a silver spoon in our mouth, and we we really just wanted to get out of our home. We don't want to <laughs> go back. <laughs> and honestly, it was that we just really didn't want to go back. We knew that. Okay, we are from Durban, and we just like we just really don't want to to go back and settle and be people that didn't make it mm. in inverted commas. And once we set out on the journey, for me it was very important that from varsity I'm staying in Joburg, I'm not going back home, yeah. and I'm gonna make something of myself. And it was just very important for me not to go back, to always go forward. Mm. And um, and that really was it. It was just knowing that I come from this background and I want to better myself. Yeah. How far that will go, only my dreams can tell. And I had major dreams from a very young age. We dreamed together. Yes. We would like have times where would speak about, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be great if we had a makeup line? But we, we, we dreamt those things without any evidence that it could happen. Could possibly you know how they say faith is the evidence of things, things unseen? unseen. Mm. It's that. Like, I really am such a huge believer in faith. You speak things as if they were, those things that are not as if they were. Mm. And everything that I've ever spoken about. I remember I tell the story of, I, I, I was renting an apartment, I had rented so many times, and I went to my apartment one day and I said, you know what? I'm so glad that you're a roof over my head and I, I have, and, and I'm not whatever, but this is the last time I'll ever rent. This is my, I'm done with renting. I'm a lender, I'm not a borrower. And I never did it again. <laughs> love that. That's how I live my life. <laughs> I love that. And I think maybe. That's how we are. Yeah. Oh, please, go ahead. You can explain. <laughs> Why? I think, I think for me, it's also, uh, it's also, see, uh, my mom yeah. was a major part of it. Um, even though she wasn't always the most nurturing person, she was always nudging you in the direction that she knew you had the possibility to go in, you mm. had the potential to go in. Um, it might not always have felt like a kind hand at the time. I remember the day that she dropped me off at grade eight in, in um, high school. She said, <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> but that's because she knew that this is a stepping, this is the first step to the rest of your life. Wow. And I don't expect to see you moving backwards. Wow. It's only yeah. forward from here. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> and something that I've mentioned 10 million times today that I love talking about is money. So yeah. I'm not going to let that slide. Because you girls seem to have a really good relationship with your finances. It doesn't often happen when you come from poverty. When you come from poverty, you don't have the tools to navigate how you, know, you make money grow, how you create wealth, how you, you, you don't buy things that you can't afford, and all of those things. What is it about your poverty story makes you have a good relationship with money, if it is that? Or what has happened over the years that has made you better understand how to navigate what you earn and how you save? I mean, you brought up saving without me even asking, you know, yeah. and that's not something that everyone can do or has the ability to do. What are the things that have happened in your lives that have taught you to think through your finances? I think for me it was our mom here. Yeah, My mom was part. somebody who never had, she never had accounts, clothing accounts, bad she never debts. had that. She never had bad debts. I remember when I was very young, this, this is just the woman that raised us. Honestly, I, we credit everything to her. She was really not a, a sweet person. She's not like, oh, you're gonna do great. She's <laughs> not that girl. But she really pushed you, you know? And um, I remember I wanted, you remember when there were Spice Girls? The Spice Girls oh, shoes? Yes. And I was like, oh my God, mom, I really want these shoes. She's I like, why keys. do you want them? And I was like, no, because everyone at school has a... She was like, okay, the day you tell me why exactly like this, because when I'm looking at them, I see very ugly shoes. But she's like, the day you tell me why you want them and you, you don't give me the reason of other people have it, 
then I will, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to give them to you. And I actually didn't have a reason because I really wanted it because other people had it. And I think from a young age, we're taught not to compare ourselves. Those are the ways that our yeah. mom taught us not to compare ourselves, which is why now the social medias and there's no pressure because we're taught from so young that you, don't, you must know why you want something yeah. and not want it because other people have it. Mm. But that's, that's not a good enough reason. Mm. And so saving was like that. So my mom wouldn't look at what the neighbor has. She just saved. She never had credit. If we didn't have it, we really didn't have it, and that's where it ended. If I wanted something and I couldn't have it, I couldn't have it. And, and it's so okay. It didn't also mean that you weren't going to have it in the future. It's just right now, the circumstances don't allow it, and it's okay for you mm. to be in that circumstance at that moment. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I think I credit that to, to, to really our upbringing. So b because when you don't have FOMO, the reason we, like with, with Lungi buying her house, with me paying off my house, it was because we really, we sacrificed buying branded items. I didn't buy branded items until I finished paying off my house. Mm. And we sacrificed doing all of that because we just had a purpose for why we wanted money mm. and, why, and what we wanted to do with money. Because it's all good and well also to want money. But what do you want it for? What is your use for it? How is it going to grow you? How is yeah. it going to nurture the things that you want to grow, you know? And where are you going to ch channel it to, yeah. you know? So I think that um, saving, you have to have a clear purpose of why you're doing it, the intention, and where it's going to take you to. And if you know that, then it will be easy for you to save because you know that there's purpose behind my finances. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I need to interview your mom. Yeah, yeah you, you should. should. But she's such I'm a simple like, woman. You should. So, shy. <laughs> so I want to get into a quick fix and that journey and what that looked like because you know when we see the products, number one, you know when you look at products and you're just like, okay, where did they get this box? Where did they get this bag? Everything looks like it's just so overwhelming to even start to think about. And of course, you guys were privileged enough to have the relationship with Mr. Price, but I imagine you went through the process. What was that like? And what did you guys learn through that process? Should I take that question? <laughs> what was that? It Ms. was, I think for us it was, um, I had already been thinking about it for so long. So when the opportunity came, where we were, had those opportunities and then create our own brand, I knew exactly what I wanted it to, to look like. Mm. And I think that that's a, that's a huge part of like my journey is you have an understanding of where you want to go, but then when you get there, know what it is that you, what do you want to do when you get there? What mm. do you want to do with the opportunity? How do you want to expand on it? Um, so in terms of the look, bringing it together, I already knew that it was going to be like what our aesthetic is already like, yeah. yeah. When yeah. we went to Mr. Price, we already had our logo. Yeah. We already had the colors that we want, the gold and the white. We already, uh, had, we already, we already had, did you have mock-ups? We, no, we, we had renders. We had renders, renders yeah, we had renders. Um, we we, we kind of really with a plan. knew what the brand was going to look like, what the brand was going to do, and, and, and Lungi was very, very meticulous. Yeah. yeah. Was very <laughs> meticulous on to what the product must be. So she was very um, much part of the ingredients of the product, how the product needs to feel, every what the product needs to do. Yeah. So every single ingredient went through her. And uh, yeah, I was just there for vibes. <laughs> 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 so when you think about, you know, uh, working with your sister and you know that you guys fight at times because I said, Lungi, how, how often do you guys fight? Like, I don't feel like you guys have been fighting. She said, we fight we and we fight hard. It. When you think about business now, let's leave how you feel about each other. When you think about business and the challenges that come with running a business, were you not afraid that you would have blocks along the way that could potentially be detrimental to the business itself? Because the business becomes the third sister. Mm. No, I'm no. never really. I think it's because we know our strong points. Yeah. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm contributing to the business. I know what Ayanda's good at. I know what she's contributing. So the lines, they are never blurred. And we never cross each other's lines, hey? Mm. No. Yeah. When it's it was always time very for respectful. production of the product and the actual, it was, Lungi's uh, ring, Rain, and yeah. then when it comes to marketing and promotions and, and, and uh, ideology behind the products and the storytelling, that's my turf. Yeah. So I think, I think we're quite clear about what our strong points are. We've never really considered fighting in the business. We fight a lot in our personal life. Like right now, guys, <laughs> Lungi. <laughs> Ayaja, 
Ayana is the sister <laughs> that's going to tell us what is going on at home. What yes, Ayana, happening? we're listening. Lungi doesn't want to do my makeup anymore. <laughs> She's too big for me. <laughs> So anyway, I have to always look for people to do my makeup when my sister's right here. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys learn about each other in, in this process that you didn't know about each other? Just, I mean, you know, studying a business is wild. Yeah. Thinking through how we're going to structure this thing, who owns what, what's the percentage that has nothing to do with how much we love each other, that is realistic about what the input is going to be, how much time are you going to spend on it, and all of that. There's a lot of really hard decisions you need to make when you start a business. What is it that you learned about each other, good and bad, mm -hmm. that you did not know coming into learn? this relationship? <laughs> Tell us. I learned that you're too busy for me. <laughs> okay. What I learned, um, I think what I learned is that Lungi is my strong point. A lot of people, we, we get so intimidated when we have somebody next to us that is much stronger at something than we are. And especially if it's your younger sister. It's just like, no, I'm supposed to know everything, you know? And uh, you always think that, you know, you are supposed to be the one in control. And, this, and it's been so refreshing for me to give her responsibility in a certain area and see how much she thrives. She really applies excellence in what she does. She's really meticulous, like I've mentioned. And she will... She, Lungi will tell you what she wants and you will give it to her because she will not stop on that <laughs> point until she gets it. So, um, so yeah, she is quite stubborn. That's good and bad. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's what I've learned about her. Uh, I've learned that um, Ayanda may not always be at meticulous with the follow through, <laughs> <laughs> but she always knows exactly what she wants. Yeah. She doesn't waver in that, and I've always respected that. Um, and she will give you the reins <laughs> to work on it, but if she feels as though it's not in line with the vision anymore, she will pull it back in. Yeah. She'll be like, no, the vision behind our product is this, and we must always keep in line with that, and I've always respected that. How do you navigate having that specific uh, personality trait when you start to engage in uh, collaborations, when you start to get into the business rooms and you're speaking in boardrooms? Because here's the thing, when women are clear about what they want, they're often seen as being difficult. And I can see that both of you are, are expressing that that is what you believe makes you guys excel at everything that you do. How do you navigate that, that very gray area where you, because I'm the same, and I find that at times it does become very difficult to, to tell people that I actually don't want this, I want that. And and I sometimes I'm like, okay, should I hold back? Should I win this battle and then you know, you know, lose this battle, win the war? How do you navigate that for yourselves, especially when you are coming into relationships with big corporations like Mr. Price? Uh, I think that's actually been like quite a journey. Uh, collaborations are difficult because there are places and parts in your collaboration with brands and people where you have to concede in some things because you're not going to be in control of everything. Hello. You're not going to be in control of everything. So um, there has been parts in our relationship with Mr. Price, for instance, where we have had to say, okay, cool, that's fine. But you have to be willing to know which battles are worth fighting and yeah. which battles you can really let go of. Like if the color of a gold thing, which is happened, not the gold, that, not you the gold that you want, then it's like, it's okay. I don't like it, but it's okay. It's not going to you know, impact the bigger picture and the bigger purpose. But where things are purpose-driven, where things are, uh, are, to, are against or not for what you are trying to sell, the story behind your brand and what it was for, that's a fight worth fighting. Even as a brand, even as individuals, we, are, we never quarrel on social media or fight on social media. We'll always fight or stand up when it's something that has to do with principle-based things. Yeah. yeah. And I think also keeping it respectful, even if you are in disagreement, um, and in your keeping it uh, respectful, as long as the brand knows that when it comes down to it, you'll deliver what needs to be delivered, then they'll respect your point of view and your yeah. stance. And I think brands really do respect people when they know what they want, yeah. and when what they want has a purpose, and when they understand why you want that, you mm. know? Um, they may not always be able to do it and to fulfill your needs as much as you want, but I think that brands have a respect for people who have a clear vision. Yeah. 
I just want to do a quick check. Did you guys decide to wear these colors because we you're a brand? We did not. We did not. We did not. I was just like, there's a lot of thinking that goes behind this <laughs> brand. No, we didn't. So here's something that I know is on everyone's mind. How quickly did we make a million? Oh, first, first, well, first couple of weeks. Yeah, like yeah. first three weeks or something. First three weeks. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go to the last segment of my questioning, and I've really thoroughly enjoyed speaking to you guys, but I want to know from both of you, um, as you navigate work, as you navigate being a new mom, congratulations, uh, as you navigate having a new home, starting a new business, there's a, there's a conversation that we keep having, particularly in the space around what we call work-life harmony, you know? How do you center yourself? Especially, I can already see A-type personalities, yeah. crazy work ethic. <laughs> how do you center yourself and how do you come back to just being grounded? I'm not settled yet. This new mom thing really threw everything. <laughs> <laughs> it really turned my whole world. I think for me, honestly, uh, I have goals and I have dreams and I have ambitions, but it's really important for me to take it one day at a time, yeah. one step at a time, one project at a time. And for me, the most important thing is wherever my hands have touched, wherever my soul has touched, excellence must be part of that. And if, it, if it's not excellent, then I know that I'm doing too much and I need to come back and, and, and see how I can do what I'm doing well or cut down. Yeah. You know, I've, I've actually just resigned from one of the shows I was doing. And I resigned because I just felt like it was one show which was nice to have. You know, it's nice to say, I'm doing so many shows, I'm doing so many things. But I felt like it wasn't growing my vision of what I, I, I'm about. or Not what I'm about, but it was just not adding to my purpose and vision. And I'd rather just spend some time, more time with my child. And so, yeah, and I, and I let go of that. So it's, it's a huge juggling act, but I think it requires a lot of honesty. A lot of yes. sitting back and, and thinking to yourself, what is my goal? Am I still in line? Am I still doing what I set out to do? And, and refining that every time you go. A lot of people uh, also give themselves a hard time that you have to stick to what you said in January mm. because it was January, you know? But you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. Your work, it's your life. It's your experience. And it's only one life. And you're allowed to refine it as you go, to change your perspective. And this quote really changed my life. And it was always said, a woman is always allowed to change her mind. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, Lungi, what centers you today? I think for me, it's always reminding myself why it is that I started what I started. And um, with, with, within the beauty space, I started uh, this work because I wanted inclusivity for all women, not only on a racial perspective, but on a financial perspective as well. And it's okay for me to work at that, at building that wall one brick at a time. Mm. And yeah, not just not overwhelming myself with at the thought of the entire wall being built. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it crazy how she's younger than me, but she's so mature. <laughs> <laughs> so that is poised. true. That is true. <laughs> and um, you know, um, one of the things that I've had to learn over the years, which has affirmed a lot of the work that I do, um, as I transition through different stages, was uh, something that I, I feel like we need to be paying Oprah a license for the number of times that we mention her. <laughs> we need to do what? I, I feel Oprah like we license. need to be paying Oprah a license. But she comes up all the time in these conversations. But there's something she spoke about when she said, it's important for you to know what your gift is mm. and to own it mm. and to get in the room and say, this is what I'm good at. Mm. So what do you believe is your superpower? I think my superpower is wisdom. I've always been somebody who is very certain of the wisdom that I possess mm. and my decisions carry wisdom. I don't make decisions lightly, I don't make choices lightly. And I think that that is a thread in my life where I've always applied wisdom and uh, a conscious choice making in the things that I do. Love it's that. very simple. Um, I think my superpower is being fearless. Um, even if I get into certain opportunities and career, not always knowing what the outcome will be or how it's gonna work out, but I'll still jump into it. I'll still jump into the deep end. I'll still start the business that everyone else think that it is not possible to start at that time. Yeah. And yeah, always being fearless, leaving an opportunity, even if it helped you buy your house, mm. I'll still leave it because I know that um, I lead in faith. Yeah. yeah. For instance, my mom does not understand what she does. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. 
But you're fearless. And finally, what's next? What's next? What's next for Quick Face? Um, what's next with Quick Face? We are, okay, so yeah. firstly we've had a lot of stocking issues because uh, the product did so well that all our forecasted products for the first three months, well, for the, for the year, year, yeah, was gone in three, three months. months. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do bear with us if you're looking for Quick Face. Um, <laughs> we are coming back end of September. And, um, and that's because um, some of our, raw, although our products are manufactured here, some of our raw products are from China and there's a lot of complicated things. But um, our products will be back end of September. They are really amazing. I'm not selling them, but they are. <laughs> and, um, but what's next for Quick Face is that we are adding some things that, um, from the feedback that we received, some of the ladies On needed a different things yeah. uh, from a product perspective. Uh, but we are still keeping to the ethos of simple makeup for the everyday woman on the go. Love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Lungi Lena, I just have it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>